We continue on game time. Notable debuts at the world's most famous arena. Some good ones, including uh, Carl Anthony Towns, who had a big night, did he not himself, around the association. But it's all about the rookie sensation, Luca. Oh, that's right. Well, not that old guy. No, that's right. Okay, well, it's, that's his dad. <laughs> There's Luca. Luca, Dirk, and the Mavs at the Garden. Watch this early. Doncic. Passed him Hardaway Jr. for the slam, lead six. And Coach uh, Dirk still got it with the spin and the fake. Keeps it high over his head. Tough to get to. Lead eight at the break. Mavs would open it up. Haywood would say it's UNC legend Harrison Barnes splitting the defense. And then Doncic. Check this out, Seku. I thought it was going to be an alley-oop at first, then I realized it was a, a set shot three-point. He was playing, was it Newcomb? You he's know, got, volleyball? He's, like he's a, got all the tricks. Let me tell you something, good talent. And then there's Enos Cantor and his whole saga. Hasn't played in seven of eight. Goes ahead like the Dallas Cowboys kissing the star. Kisses center court. Fans are excited. He's excited, but he's also rusty. Don't believe me? Yes. Okay. A lot of cold air in the Northeast. He had five points, nine minutes. Mavs up big. Not done, Coach. Doncic, 16 points, eight boards, five assists. Mavs shot 40% from the three-point line. Dirk from Dennis Smith Jr. A season-high 14 for Dirk. Oh, and the Knicks shot only 23 from the three-point line. That's not good at all. Kevin Knox, 17. And you look, you, you think about Doncic and... Everywhere he's gone, he's been a story, but because of his play, here we get a chance to hear from him in his conversation with Rebecca Harlow after the win on the road. Luca, you have found a way all season long as a rookie to come in and take over these games. You know, how did you guys blow this one open in the third and into the fourth quarter? Yeah, we need a win for sure. Uh, we played great. Uh, I mean, we were uh, solid on D. Uh, that's what uh, keep us going. You know, and I think we, we need that win much. So tonight, your guy, Dirk Nowitzki, gets a season high here. What has it been like for you to come into this league as a rookie and play with one of the greatest, if not the greatest, European player of all time? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's amazing, you know. Uh, but especially, you know, when I first came into Dallas, I was, like, afraid to talk to him, you know. He was, like, the legend, you know. But now... I joke with him a lot, uh, you know, I make joke, I make fun of him a lot, <laughs> and and he's just great, you know, he's like a very normal person off the court, and that's that's what most most means to me. Ahead of this draft, Kristaps Porzingis said that he thought you were the most talented player in this draft. You guys have played together in Europe, and obviously he's injured, but when you think about the idea of playing with him on this garden floor, what gets you excited about that? Oh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just an amazing player, you know. I watch him a lot, especially when I was in Europe watching NBA games. I watch a lot of New York Knicks just because of him, you know, and he's he has an amazing future here in the NBA, and he can be one of the best to play this game. I don't think that's tampering, but I'm not really sure of the rules. Let's get Griff on the phone. Celtics with or without Kyrie this season. Look at the numbers without points up. Defense a little bit better. But the question is, would it be enough on this night to slow Kemba and company? Jason Tatum is there. Kyrie out with the hip. And Tatum is in in a big way. And, Coach, it seems like when he plays without Kyrie, we get that demonstrative version of Tatum we got last season. Well, it's the aggressive Tatum. It's the Tatum that we saw last year have the ball in his hands, taking big shots at the end of games. And as you mentioned, without Kyrie, somebody has to do it. And we've seen it with Rozier. And here's Jalen Brown. Nice play. The replay on the reverse slam. He had 24 and 10. I mentioned Kemba. Going to be a, a, a fun experience for him at the All-Star Game. Seiku, so happy for him watching his reaction when he found out 21 in the game. Yeah, and this guy who's carried a load for Charlotte all season long, well-deserved uh, starting uh, on the All-Star Game. Scary Terry, 17 and 10, lead four for Boston. We go to the third quarter. Celtics pull away. More from Rogier, who you can tell anytime he gets a chance to remind everybody what happened last year, he reminds everybody what happened last year. Floater and transition goes, and some work from the elder statesman, Al Horford with a fadeaway. Tatum miss. Rogier 
Watch this. No look. One handed. That's part of that chemistry that had developed last year when they were playing so well down the stretch in the playoffs. And that was part of the adjustment in the beginning of this season. And you watch that from Hayward, and it's tough almost to say who to watch. I mean, we know what a great player Kyrie is. But even Hayward, you see, with that chemistry with this group when Kyrie's not on the floor, right? There's, there's, fair something, to say? there's something about the default setting this team has when he's not out there that just works for everybody else. It's hard to ignore, uh, and I'm sure it's something that Brad Stevens understands. Kyrie maybe is the only guy who's not understanding just how well they function without him in the lineup. Well, uh, we continue to show you how well many function around the league, including having the shot at the right time. Cats, nine lives. This cat, one big shot. We'll see it next. They're constructing the perfect NBA player. Using skill sets and attributes for current players narrowed down through a survey in which GMs and head coaches have weighed in. Here are the choices for this week's category. Who has the best jump shot in the NBA? Steph Curry. Another one of those parking lot threes from Curry. This man's pulling out from 35 feet with ease. J.J. Redick. J.J. Redick with that majestic three-point stroke. Clay Thompson. Thompson for three. Yes. Talk about catching fire. Oh, my goodness. Now it's up to you to vote for your choice right now on Twitter and help us build the perfect player. Jump shooting this time around. You can vote on Twitter at NBA TV until noon on Friday. The candidates are the Splash Brothers and J.J. Redick. Uh, when this topic came up and we were presented these three candidates, mm -hmm. my first reaction was, it's Steph. Yes. Right? Yes. And then I, I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. And you guys said, Steph. Yeah, okay. All right, just so we're on the same page. I, I, yeah. we're, we're, and that's got nothing, nothing to do with the other two guys. For me, is he's the greatest shooter of all time. Right. Whether it's off the bounce, whether it's distance, whether it's catch and shoot. And there's so many criteria for me. And I, and I think for me, it's contested now. That's the next thing we should start talking about, contested. Who's the best contested shooter from distance? And it's Steph and KD, James Harden, and those yep. guys. But I think overall, you give me Steph any day and I love clay I think that's where we should start talking where do you rank clay as all-time shooters <laughs> now now to go into the background when we approached general managers when NBA TV approached general managers about candidates for this shooting form was part of the equation mm. as well and you might argue that you like JJ Reddick's form or clay Thompson's yes. form which is classic better than Steph's in terms of results for me it's pretty hard hard to argue against Steph Curry his worst season from three-point Range, for instance, is only slightly off Clay's career average. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, Clay's best three point shooting season, 44% last year, is barely better than Steph's career number. And these are, I mean, these are, again, great shooters, but you're talking about the best of all time. Yeah, the best of all time. And look, you talk about the three point shooting era that we're in right now, and all these great shooters Smitty talked about. Clay Thompson, you could even maybe throw JJ Reddick, J, uh, Harden in there. Uh, these guys are some of the best in the game, the best that we've seen. And the separation between them and Steph yeah. is, I mean, is a huge gap, in, term, in my opinion, in terms of right. shooting and all the criteria that Smitty alluded to. But Clay Thompson, I mean, what he does and how he shoots it, the, the quick release, the yeah. confidence, um, just off the charts. It, it, it's, you know, it's funny. We're in this era where everybody shoots threes, mm -hmm. and not everybody necessarily should be shooting threes. Right. But when you watch Klay Thompson, it's like going to the ballet. Like, it, it is, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, and, and, and he and Steph combined, two of maybe the best of all time on the same team at the same time. It's pretty remarkable. You know, and Matt, I, I, we've been around and doing games, all of us, and you come up with a stat and you say, and Will Chamberlain. Yeah, right. right. Steph is starting to be that for me. He's going to be the end, yeah. You know, at the end, to me, if it goes well, it's going to be, we're going to talk about all these great shooters, and Steph is not going to be, he's going to be, we're going to be mentioning him like Will. Right. That stat is going to be so far put out of range. I think that's where Steph is going to be far shooting. You know, in terms of three-point percentage and jump shooting is more than threes, but Kyle Korver has got incredible career mm -hmm. numbers, but he can't do the things that Steph Curry yes. does off the move, off the dribble, in awkward situations. The range, he's redefined what's a good shot in the NBA. It's just... It, it's a different era because of that guy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's some guys that flat out can shoot it. They're three for five, two for four, 
Well, this guy is 10 for 20. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a difference. He's shooting a whole bunch of three-point field goal attempts, and he's shooting shots that was, for me, is in big-time games, in crunch time when they need him. So it's hard. It's, it's unbelievable what he's doing with the guy when you start talking about shooting. If he's the best jump shooter of all time, is number two on this list, or is it somebody else? That's where I think we should start debating, and I would love for us to get into that. And I think he's the best all time, but that's when you got the Clay, the Ray, the Reggies. That's when we start to talk about right. who's number two. Then that'll be next season when we do our second most perfect player. Mm. <laughs> second. So look for that <laughs> next year. And look for crunch time coming up tonight at 930 Eastern time. All the big finishes around the league from this Wednesday night. Coming up here in the meantime on Game Time Live, Jaron Jackson Jr. is having a great rookie season in Memphis. Area 21 pays a visit to the Grizzlies Rook next. Oh, he can! I wasn't sure if I could do that still. You good? You good? You good, Lefty? What you want to do? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I got nail. I'm nail. I'm nail. I'm low. I'm low. He go, he go. Right here. Help. We out. We out. Get it out. Get it out. Get through, yep, 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 yep. Here you go, ball here. Here you go, go ahead. Now you gotta get that right leg around. Get the right leg, there you go, yes. You keep doing that, you money. Keep going. Uh, hard work on three, one, two, three. Vince Carter firing up the troops here in Atlanta during practice. He turned 42 mm. years of age this week. 42. It's amazing, still playing. Yeah. It's unbelievable, and he's still in the rotation. He's still getting minutes, and he's he's still reasonably productive. He's still dunking. 37-plus percent from three, still getting dunks here and there. No, it's pretty remarkable. Great career, and, and for him to still, after all these years, yes. all that mileage out there playing, having fun, the love of the game, being an impact in the locker room and on the court. Uh, Y'all might be a new trendsetter, Grant, with the Atlanta Hawks. The first player-coach broadcaster. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think Vince right, I've done games with him. Kind of, he's do already it. done some broadcasting. Just play like in the second quarter. Yeah, and then then go back to the halftime, do <laughs> halftime media, and then play and then coach during his regularly right. scheduled breaks. Right. He just wa walks over to the table and it's sits down with Bob Rathbun and Dominic. No, uh, during the game, why not? <laughs> Pre and post show and halftime, and then play and then coach a little bit. He can do that. Yeah, he he began his NBA career. Before the, the two first round picks, Kevin Herter and Trey Young were even born. Wow. That, that is amazing. That's a, but, the, but the benefit, obviously, in Atlanta to have a guy like that, mm -hmm. a, a Hall of Fame, a future Hall of Famer, uh, you know, a guy that, that they may not have remembered because he was so young, but a guy that had an impact on the game, uh, that has value, who can contribute in the locker room. Uh, his locker is sandwiched in between John Collins and Trey, Trey Young, and, and that's intentional by Lloyd, Lloyd Pierce because his – you know, his, his experience, his professionalism, mm -hmm. everything about him. Uh, and then the, on top of that, what he's still doing on the court, yes. it, it, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, what a, you could talk to the guys, Trey and John Collins, just I would talk to them about every trying to absorb everything. Also, longevity. What is he doing to be able to play at this level for this long? I, it's remarkable to have a guy like that. They, it's invaluable for John Collins and this entire, you know, Hawks organization. What, what can Trey Young pick up from Carter, and what have you, what have you liked about him? Well, I, I, I think if I'm a rookie and I, I'm really going to ask Vince, you know, the dog days of the NBA, my shooting percentage, what do I need to do? And I think he's turned that corner. The game against the Clippers, I thought it was one of his best games. Not numbers-wise. Mm -hmm. The reason for me, Grant, was you're going up against Avery Bradley, one of the best, Patrick Beverly, and then you have Lent and the other rookie in Shea Gilgis Alexander. That to me, the way he continuously drove the basketball, making plays in the paint, I thought it was his best game of the season. You know, I, I think to Smitty's point earlier, um, in, in terms of just showing them how to take care of the take care of yourself, your longevity. You know, Trey is a smaller guy. Um, you know, I think he working on his body. Um, you know, as a small guy, he's going to have to be very uh, intentional. He's going to have to be very. Uh, strategic in terms of what he does, taking care of himself. Like a lot of young guys these days, you know, you don't, nutrition, training, diet, all that stuff 
you know, you, you can get by just on talent. And now at this level, you know, he's come in and made a great impact and shown that he belongs. But do you want to be special? And what does it take mm -hmm. to get to that level as a guy who's a smaller guy? And Vince, having been around, played with some greats, he's a great himself. I just think understanding how to, like, take care of your body, be a professional, all those things, not just for Trey Young, but for all those guys, but particularly for Trey, who's got the toughest job in a, in a, in a league at the point guard position where every night is a tough, a tough matchup. So, um, but, yeah, he, he's invaluable. He, he's been awesome, and I think he has another year left in him. I do, too. Uh, Hawks Blair, Coach are out broadcast. of town. As you probably heard, the Super Bowl is here in Atlanta this week, so not coincidentally, the Hawks are out of town on a long road trip. Seven games. They're two and one so far. And over his last two games, Trey Young has averaged 28 and eight assists a game and shooting nearly 64% mm -hmm. from the field. All right, we'll.